Welcome to our art project inspired by the German art artist Friedrich Hunderwasser. So hopefully you have read all about the artist so you kind of have an understanding or an idea of the type of art that he tends to create. Now we're going to be focusing on creating some of his traditional flowers or lollipop, lollipop flowers as some of the critics call. And first I want to go over the supply list because there's two ways to do it. You can do the project the traditional way, which is this example that I will be demonstrating, or if you don't have the supplies to do it this traditional way, then you'll be doing it a little bit of a modif modified way, which is totally fine. So first let's talk about the supplies. For the supplies you're going to need watercolor paper. So that needs to be a thicker paper. It will be really hard if you use just plain um, copy paper because when you paint on that it will rip. So you're going to want to use a thicker white paper if you have it. Watercolor paint, you're going to need water and a paintbrush. Then you're going to need oil pastels. So either um, a white one, or sorry, not either, both. You need both, a white and a black one. If you have everything else but the pastels, you can substitute the pastels for crayons. Now, say you don't have the watercolor or the pastels, which is fine. You can use markers, crayons, and colored pencils to do, to do the same concept. So when I did it with my markers, I did the same concept that the project is going to entail. I'm going to have my cool colored flowers and my warm colored backgrounds. And this one was done with my modified supplies. I used marker and colored pencil for this one. For the main project, we will be using the watercolor, the black and white pastel, warm and cool colors to create our project. All right, moving on, we need to talk about color before we begin. I want to address the color concept of warm and cool colors. So our cool colors is your greens, blues, and purples, and our warm colors are our red, orange, and yellows. So our cool colors are going to be what we will be using inside of the concentric circle flowers for our project. And then our warm colors is what we're going to use to fill in the background where we have our line and pattern design. So if we take a moment and we look at our color wheel, you can see that half of the color wheel is my warm and cool warm colors and then the other half of my color wheel are my cool colors. So again, for the background of your project, you're using your warm colors, your reds, oranges and yellows. Then for the flowers, you're using your cool colors, your blues, greens and purples. Alrighty, let's address the meaning of concentric circles. So our artist, Hunderwasser, used concentric circles in his artwork. And concentric circles just means that circles that are on top of each other, changing in size as you draw another, but always having the same center axis. So if I were to get a marker, and demonstrate this, you would start with a smaller circle and then you make a circle that's a little bit bigger around that, another circle that's around that one, and another circle. And that would be your concentric circles. It starts in the middle and it expands out but it's still going in a circle from small to large. So that's the concept you'll use when we create our lollipop Hunderwasser flower project. Lastly, I want to talk about line and pattern. So line and pattern 
is going to be a part of the project. You're going to need to use your line and patterns for the background of your artwork. So if you notice, I have my lines here, here, and here. You will be creating a pattern in the background. Remember, a pattern is art made by repeating visual elements in your work. So that could mean you have polka dots and you create a dot and you repeat it over and over and over again to create that pattern. Or maybe you use curvy lines and you repeat the curvy line over and over again in your artwork. So you'll be taking your knowledge of line and pattern and applying it to creating your lollipop flowers as well as creating your background element. Lastly, let's discuss what the project is going to break down into. First, we'll begin by using our black oil pastel to draw out our Hunderwasser inspired lollipop flowers. Second, I'll show you a trick with the white pastel. You'll be creating the patterns and lines in the background with the white one. And then lastly, we'll be using our watercolors to fill in with cool colors the flowers and warm colors for the background. So at this time, I would like you to get your black oil pastel and your thicker white piece of paper. Once you've done that, come on back. All right, welcome back. We are going to start with using our black oil pastel. If you don't have an oil pastel, you can use a black crayon. You, we're using the oil pastel because it's oil based and we're going to be using watercolor over it. Remember, oil and water do not mix. So when we paint over the oil pastel, the watercolor will move aside. And we'll get to see that in a little bit. For now, we're going to start with creating our concentric circles um, and creating the flower part. Remember our artist, Hunderwasser, he doesn't always use straight lines. He likes more natural lines, lines that curve. So when you go to make the stem of your flower, don't feel like you have to make it rigid and super straight. It can have some curve to it or it can be thinner and thicker in some places. Now you're gonna need to create at least three or four different sized flowers. Now I like to start by doing my concentric circles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a concentric circle. I'm gonna start with a small circle and I'm gonna work my way out, adding more circles that go around each other. And I wanna push down on the paper with my pastel. Next, I'm going to add my other my three other flowers, my concentric circle flowers. And if we look at the example, notice how some of them can be really big, some of them could overlap, meaning one thing on top of another, and maybe you have a stem that's kind of wonky and it goes right through it, or you have a stem that goes from the bottom of the paper all the way to the top. So I'll show a few more flowers, but you can go ahead and either watch me demonstrate some more drawing of the flowers, or you can pause and go create your own concentric circle lollipop flowers. I'm going to make my stem. I'm gonna push down, and remember it can be a curve line, because our artist Hunderwasser doesn't always use those straight, rigid lines. He likes to use those natural ones. And I want to make something that overlaps. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with my stem this time. I'm going to go up. And remember, you're creating your own. You do not have to copy my design at all.
I'm gonna go in the middle, around, and around. So I have my concentric circle. I want this flower to be in the foreground, the foreground meaning the front. So I'm going to create a flower behind it in the background, which will make it look like it's overlapping. And this time I'm going from my outer circle and I'm going smaller and smaller in. I'm, create, I'm kind of creating my concentric circles backwards, which is fine. You can tr test that out. Why not? And I'm going to press down and create my stem. Now remember, you're going to need at least three or four. So right now, go ahead and work on your lollipop flowers, creating your concentric circles. Try to overlap one or two of the flowers. When you're done drawing it all out in your with your black um, oil pastel, go ahead and come back, and we'll do the next step. All right, welcome back. So you will have used your black oil pastel and you have created your three or four concentric lollipop flowers. Now, you might have some pastel in your hand. You can choose to either go wash your hands or maybe you have a baby wipe you can use and you can wipe all of that off. So you wanna take some time and clean your hands. Next, you are going to grab your white oil pastel. Or if you don't have that, remember you can use a white crayon and we're going to talk about real quick as a reminder this is where we're going to be adding in our patterns or our line designs in our background you kind of want to divide up your background maybe into three or four different sections you're going to be drawing the background in white so it might be a little tricky to see at first but when you paint over it with your watercolor, you, it will be what I call magic. So you'll be able to see the white design that you did. I'm gonna show you real quick what happens when you draw with a white pastel on paper and then you use watercolor and you paint over it. Okay, so this is just a quick little demonstration of what will happen when we use the white oil pastel and we paint over it with our watercolor. It's what you call a watercolor resist or a paint resist. Oil and water do not mix. This is an oil pastel and then we have our watercolor. So if I were to make a design with my white pastel and then after I'm done making the design, it might be a little tricky to see, but that's okay. You can always kind of maneuver your page around so you can see what it is that you're drawing. When you're done, the coolest thing will happen. You'll get your watercolor, you'll get your water and your paintbrush, and you're going to paint directly over, so right on top of it. I'll get my watercolor, and let's watch this magic. Now we're starting to see that really awesome design that we made with our white oil pastel, creating that really awesome oil and water resist. So this is the concept. This is the idea of the background for our art project. You'll draw everything in that white pastel or your white crayon, and then you're gonna be painting over it. So this was just a little example. We're gonna jump back into the pro All right, so we're back now. You're gonna take your pastel and you're going to pick three or four different lines or patterns, and you're going to draw them in the background. You're gonna to wanna to fill the background. Do not take the pastel and draw inside of the flowers, only creating the lines in the background. 
go ahead and use your knowledge of lines and patterns. Draw with your white pastel. When you're done with this step, come on back and we'll talk about the painting step next. Okay, so hopefully now you have created those patterns and lines with your white pastel in the background area. I'm not, you probably can't quite see mine, but if the light hits it the right way, you can kind of see my lines and my patterns that I created with my white pastel. Now from here, let's quickly review what needs to be done inside of the flower and what needs to be done in the background. Remember, we are using our warm and cool colors in certain parts of this project. Our cool colors, our blues, purples, and greens, are going to go inside of the flower. So you're only using blues, purples, and greens. Those are your cool colors. Then your warm colors, your reds, oranges, and yellows, are going to be what you're going to be painting the background. So you're not going to take red, orange, and yellow and use all three colors at the same time. You're going to want to divide up or split up the different parts of your background with your different warm colors. So I have my reds, my orange in one section, and my yellow in one section, my warm colors. So from here, you're going to start with your cool colors in the inside of your flower. Remember, it's okay if you get paint on the pastel because it's oil-based. The water will move away. Oil and water do not mix. You're going to use your reds and your yellows and your orange, or your, I'm sorry, your cool colors, your blues, greens, and purples for your flower. And you're going to want to put more than one cool color inside of the flower. I would say at least two to three. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to paint my flowers and if it's too dry, always can add more water to my paint. And you see how I just went right over the pastel line and the watercolor moves away from the oil-based pastel. And again, my insides of my flowers are my cool colors, my blues and my greens and my purples. And you're gonna wanna use two to three different cool colors inside of your flower. So from here, I want you to go ahead and paint your cool colored flowers and then come on back and we'll do the background. All right, looking good so far. So I have my cool colored flowers, remember using your blues, greens, and purples, and I've painted at least two to three of those cool colors inside of my concentric circle lollipop flowers. Now, real quick, if you are not doing the paint and the oil pastels because you don't have that, that's fine. Let me jump in real quick and show you my modified one. So my modified one, I still did the same concept with my cool colors. I had my three, my two to three colors, my greens, my purples, and my blues, and I colored in those sections. Now, we're gonna work on the background. Remember, our background is going to be painted in our warm colors, your red, your oranges, and your yellows. If you have a paint tray like I do, you are going to have to mix your colors in order to get orange. So remember, yellow and red create orange. Now when you paint your warm color background, as a reminder, you need to split up the sections of the background. So different parts of your background will be a different warm color. Now I'll start and demonstrate. Remember, when you go over that white pastel, the paint will move away from the pastel because you'll be able to paint directly on top of it with your watercolor. 
And remember, you're going to want to paint everything. You don't want to leave any piece of your artwork unpainted. You want to make sure that you have filled everything in all the way out to the edges. We don't want to leave any white spots or any part of the paper unpainted. So from here you can see that as I paint directly over the pastel, the watercolor is moving away from the pastel. Before I have you go and do the background on your own, just a reminder, make sure that you are using different warm colors in different parts of your background. So you have different sections of your warm colors. If you're using the alternative supplies like crayons, colored pencils, or markers, I suggest that you create your pattern with a warm color. So I used a red marker and then I went in and colored that section red using a colored pencil. You could do a crayon. I used a yellow marker to create my pattern in my background and then I colored it in with crayon or colored pencil. Same thing. For now, if you're doing the painting, go ahead and go and work on the background with your warm colors and then come on back and we'll talk about the finished art piece. So hopefully you enjoy painting the background with your warm colors. Remember you have different parts of the background, a different warm color. So I did my yellow, I have my red, I made my orange by mixing my yellow and red. And then I kind of wanted to balance my piece out so I did yellow again on the side and that's okay. So from here, you are completed with the project. You need to make sure that you go look at the assignment on Canvas, double check that you did all of the steps, look at the grading rubric at the bottom of the assignment, Make sure you completed everything the rubric says because that's what you'll be graded on. Remember your flowers should have been cool colors only and your background should have had warm colors only. You should have done your concentric circles, your stems, and then you should have used your knowledge of line and pattern to create those in the background. Once you're done with your art project, take a picture of it and submit it to Canvas. Now, I'm just going to show the modified one one more time. So if you did it with crayons, color pencils, or markers, that's fine. You need to make sure you had your patterns in the background, you used your warm colors in the background, and then you used your cool colors inside the flower. So once you're done, go ahead, take a picture of it, submit it, and then I am super excited to see everything.